So I'm going to show you quickly how to think about your internal vulnerabilities and how to perform an internal vulnerability scan. I'm going to be using RoboShadow for this, but you can pretty much use any tool. And I'm just going to be talking through where the nuances are and what you should be thinking about when it comes to internal vulnerability assessments. My name is Terry Lewis, and for 20 years, I've helped organizations as large as global investment banks, right through to VC-backed scallops and startups manage their cybersecurity posture. So this video is a minute and a half. It shows just effectively me downloading the free agent within RoboShadow. We click on the scanners, uh, select the land scan, drop down from the menu what is your actual device, and then just click go. The default here is to scan the top 1000 ports, so it's nice and quick as you can see. This is a real time video. Um, however, uh, the full 65,000 port scan range is available within RoboShadow, and you can do that. Just might have to leave that running overnight. So that's going to go ahead, find vulnerabilities, and you'll see me checking from the drop down menu um, going into looking at the vulnerabilities in a bit more uh, detail I also then open the report at the end but what I really wanted to run through with you is the context here so everyone's got internal vulnerabilities you really need to segregate your network the best way is to run a kiosk type model where only your devices can see themselves and the route off the internet gateway printers can be a problem and scanners and things like that for for some of those nuances however you can just put all of those devices on their own network it's called vlanning not to get into uh, the technicalities of everything but don't worry if you've got vulnerabilities because everybody has. You just really want to use RoboShadow or anything to check. Have you got any big vulnerabilities, big critical ones with important pieces of tech? People, or hackers should I say, will use uh, these internal vulnerabilities to then hide. So first of all, they've either got to come through your router, so through the front door gate as being your router or your firewall, um, or they're going to compromise a desktop and come through to the organization like that. Once they're in, that's when your internal vulnerabilities start to play out a little bit more because that's what they then want to do is find an old printer or scanner or something that they can hide in to then so that they can then work out how they're going to, going to compromise the network. Usually a big ransomware attack happens over the course of weeks. They need to get in first and they need to hide somewhere. So it's that what they call remote sort of reverse shell type capability there. That's what they're looking for. And that's why it's good to be able to segregate your network. Everyone, every hacker, should I say, will assume that a, a laptop that they've compromised can be updated. The apps get updated or Windows get updated. So it's making sure that you don't give them the op opportunity to move laterally within the network and then hide in an old printer or scanner or something like that. That's what you're looking to stop effectively. So hopefully that covers internal vulnerabilities. Everybody's got them. Please don't, when you, if you do the Robo Shadow test here and you realize you've got lots of internal vulnerabilities, don't fret, it happens, but it is good just to show your IT support company or show your internal IT support company and just start to move to a world where you start to segregate the network. Any devices which are hard to update or can be easily compromised, they're the ones you kind of want on the same network away from servers and people's laptops and anything else that might be more important to the organization. So hopefully that covers up the internal portion um, of vulnerability scanning for you.